Hurricane season is underway, and there's finally a new leader of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Brock Long. All right, the U.S. Senate confirmed him as the new FEMA administrator last month, and he joins us live from Washington this morning. Uh, first of all, Brock, congratulations on mm -hmm. that. Nice to have you with us. What is on your priority list? Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Stephanie. It's great to be here, and it's an honor to serve the nation in this capacity. Um, obviously, uh, coming in over the past month, we've been making sure that everybody in the federal government who supports the National Response Plan fully understands their roles and responsibilities, and then also that we're working with our state and local partners to understand any gaps that may exist within uh, their ability to respond and recover so that we can bridge those gaps and make sure that we're protecting Americans. So what experience from your past jobs do you think will be most helpful in this role? Well, I've served as a state director of Alabama's Emergency Management Agency, so I've received support from the federal government, but I've also uh, you know, led vital programs in making sure that citizens understand who makes evacuation decisions, what their hazards are, uh, and how to get out of storm surge vulnerable areas and into facilities with, uh, that, that can withstand the wind. So uh, I have well-rounded experience. I've been in both the private sector as well as the public sector in emergency management. Well, you're following quite the legend in, in Craig yeah. Fugate, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but you are of his mold, that, for, you know, from what, everything that I read, which is great. What kind of challenges do you see uh, with the agency at this point? Well, obviously, it's understanding the workforce and making sure that we're properly uh, supporting the state and local partners. Each one of these states is, is tremendously different, so a one-size-fits-all solution to disaster preparedness and response and recovery uh, doesn't work. Uh, we, we have to make sure that we're utilizing our workforce correctly to ultimately help our states and locals achieve their goals, uh, not, not FEMA's goals, but more importantly, how we efficiently and effectively coordinate the firepower of the federal government down mm -hmm. to the states and locals when they call upon us. Let's talk about the budget because FEMA is one of those agencies uh, being targeted. Significant cuts. We're talking 11 percent under the proposed budget from President sure. Trump. How do you plan on defending FEMA's budget? So it is my job to defend the agency, and I've taken a hard look at the budget. Obviously, it's my, it's my role to make sure that we can operate. And right now, um, you know, one, one thing that's very important is, is that the pre-disaster grants that we provide, and we provide almost 98% of the grants, you know, put forward by the Department of Homeland Security, they've been trending downward since 2011 and are continuing to do so as we find ways to do uh, business and preparedness a little more effectively and efficiently. Uh, regarding the disaster relief fund, it was leveled based on a, you know, it was, it was proposed based on a 10-year average of what we've seen over the last decade. Brock, the uh, PDM grant program has been cut by more than 60 percent. What are you going to do to give states and communities better options? Yeah, if, if I could sign a piece of paper, uh, you know, and move a lot of the post-disaster mitigation funding to the front side, I would have done it in a heartbeat. You know, this, this agency, a lot of people don't give the agency credit for what it does in the post-disaster realm, but we hand out more than a billion dollars on average in post-disaster mitigation. The problem is, is you have to get hit to access this mitigation funding. I would like to work with Congress and, and others to be able to move more of that funding up front. We only have about 30 seconds left. I'm sorry about that. I want to talk about flooding really quick because it's starting to get privatized here and the budget actually zeroes out the flood hazard mapping and risk analysis. Are you concerned about that? So risk map is not going away. It is one of the foundational programs that helps us understand uh, how to set up actuarial rates for the National Flood Insurance Program. It's not going away. It's actually a change in the business process to relieve the burden of the taxpayer. All right. We All certainly right. appreciate you coming on, Administrator Long. And uh, Looking forward to working with you, sir. I was about to say, no offense. Thank I hope you. we don't talk to you anytime soon, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs>